Salutations. I have great news. It worked. By God, it worked. Uh, only for a little bit, though. Halfway through, I began to lose vision of you in my head, and I just... I'm sorry, but I just locked up. I could tell the doctor was disappointed. But he said he was happy that I was making progress, so I guess that's good. To be honest, I am not sure how long I'm going to be here. My original thought of only a few weeks is not looking good. At this rate, it's going to be much longer, and I'm not excited about that. But whatever helps me get better, I suppose. I love you. Farewell, Yuri. Well, the tactic worked. Somewhat. I sighed. Time, time. Patience, patience. I needed to get- or go get the stamps. Surprisingly, none randomly appeared in my desk drawer. Cool. I quickly entered my house and grabbed my writing supplies. My plan was to write the letter while I was riding the bus. Save time and I could write in a different environment. That always helps, or so I've heard. I exited my house and locked the door behind me. And I'm still not sure how he manages to write on the bus, either standing or sitting. As soon as I got onto the bus, I sat down and began to write. I would stand, but I can't exactly stand up and write. I would look like a dork. Yuri, that's great news. I'm so happy for you. And don't worry about not making instant progress. You locked up? That's okay. You can try again. You can keep trying. Eventually, you'll do it. I know you will. Your resolve shows me that plain as day. And don't worry about how long it takes. It's hard to not have you here, but I'd much rather you be healthy and better than back here and, well, hurting. I can't help you like they can. You said it yourself. But it's gonna be hard because of God damn it, of course it is. We've said it so many times, both of us. And I'm sorry that I don't have another magical cure all method to give you in this letter. But I just want you to know that I'm behind you. I always am. But right now, you don't need that. What you need is to keep your head facing up and in front of you. Keep moving forward. I love you. Hallie. Oh, how sweet. There was apparently an old woman in the seat beside me. See? Future knowledge told me that was an old lady. Thanks. I was three times more uncomfortable. I looked out the window and massaged my nose. That letter felt pointless. But I was at that point. It was that time where I could no longer give words of encouragement. I was at the point where I just had to hope she could pull through. It's all in her hands now. I muttered. What is, dear? This bus ride cannot end any sooner. Stupid post office. I might as well buy a hundred stamps while I'm here. I never want to come back. I walked up to the man at the counter. Oh, may I help you? Can I get some stamps? Sure thing, how many? Uh, twenty? Well, the stamps come on a sheet of twenty-five. Does that work for you? Sure. Ugh, god, this sucks. I paid for my stamps and got the hell out of there. But as soon as I stepped outside, I stopped. What am I doing? I walked back in, grabbed a free envelope, and put my letter inside. I put one of my new stamps in the corner and walked back up to the guy at the counter. Missed me? Sure did! I chuckled. This guy's making this place bearable. Think you could mail an envelope for me? Sure can. He took my envelope. Have a good day. And then I got the hell out of there. Back to the bus. A 20 minute bus ride for some goddamn stamps. The, feet, the things I do for love. Yes, post office is the most unbearable places on earth. Four days. Four days without a letter. The most worrying four days of my life. Okay, that may have been slight hyperbole, but who the hell cares? I clicked my tongue and set my plate on the coffee table, half a sandwich being untouched. I couldn't eat. I tried to make food to take my mind off of the situation, but clearly I couldn't leave it alone for more than three minutes. It was just worrying. Two days, two days, two days, and then four? What could have happened? Did she lose track of time? Did the letter get lost by the postal service? Did my letter get lost? Did the bastard at the post office lose my letter? I knew I shouldn't have. <laughs> what the hell was that? It sounded like something hit the door. Did some kid throw an apple at my door? I stood up and walked to the front entrance. I opened up the door and looked down at my welcome mat. A newspaper? I'm not subscribed to any paper services, and this one doesn't seem to be some kind of free service either. It was probably delivered by mistake. I bent down to pick it up, and when I stood back up and looked out onto my lawn, I noticed it. My mailbox, red flag, pointed up. I dropped the newspaper and ran to it. 
Holy hell, how did I miss this? I was outside just this morning. Maybe I was too tired, or maybe it was just delivered today? Either way, opening up the mailbox and seeing a white letter was one of the most relieving things I've ever experienced. I quickly tore it open. Honey, I kept moving forward. I had my first full session with the doctor just two hours ago. It was difficult. It may have been one of the most difficult experiences of my life, but I did it. I talked to the therapist about the experience at the carnival. I believe I'm ready to talk about more than that, but I'd rather take it slow, if that makes sense. Talking about other aspects of the problem gets a little deeper than just me making a mistake. But the carnival was progress. I'm proud of myself, and I know you're proud of me too. I love you so, so much. Farewell, Yuri. I wiped my eyes. Damn, who's cutting onions? She's getting better. She's healing. It's working. I held the paper to my chest and slowly fell to my knees. God, she... She's getting better. She's doing it. The tears fell harder. I was crying. I... Something I said helped. Right? I... I didn't cause more problems? I laughed. Good fucking lord. I didn't ruin someone's life. No, 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 no. I... I didn't do anything wrong this time. Yuri's solving her problems, and I'm just there in the background. Exactly as it should be. I cried harder. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. I slowly gathered myself. I needed to write back. I stood up and walked back into my house. I sat down at the bar and pulled over my template. It was just a piece of paper and a pen. Something I had set up two days ago in preparation for her letter. But since her letter didn't arrive on time, it just sat there gathering dust. But I'm glad I could put it to use now. Yuri! I'm so happy to hear this. I'm so happy, and I'm so proud of you. You have no idea how proud I am. I love you so much, Hallie. It was a short letter, but hopefully my words carry the weight they should. I put my letter in an envelope, used a stamp, and opened my front door. I closed my front door after putting the mail in the mailbox. I walked into my living room, smile on my face. Finally feeling more lively, I picked up my sandwich and took a bite. Pastrami. Nice. Oh, you and your deli meats. I sat in the club room, feeling completely empty. My good mood from a week ago was all but gone. Like a flame, it died out. I'll report back then. She never did. An entire week, and I had heard nothing from her. My mind kept jumping to conclusions. Did her letter get lost in customs? Did she forget to send a letter? I don't know why letters would go into customs. Did she fail? Obviously, all of this was just a bunch of worst-case scenario situations my mind had come up with to freak me out. But my spirit was already weakened so harshly by the absence of Yuri that I felt myself start to believe the things my mind was saying. That she really did fail. That she was dead in a ditch somewhere after a successful attempt on her own. Wham! Ah, Jesus! Someone slammed something into my desk which scared the hell out of me. Natsuki? That's my name, yes! It's nice to see you. What's up with you, Hallie? Straight to the point, as usual. What do you mean? I'm fine. I wasn't. Bull! I've been paying attention. You seem really upset by something. You don't have to lie to me. Well, Natsuki, what do you think it could possibly be? Wow, that's... What? Never mind, never mind. It's just... I looked around. Everybody was off doing their own thing. It was safe. My wall crumbled. I haven't seen Yuri in weeks. Nor have I heard from her at all. And it's really getting to me. Oh, that's it? I thought your mom died or something. Just go visit her, dude. I'm sure the hospital allows visitors. It's 12 hours away, Natsuki. So? So I... What, you don't want to see her or something? No, I do, but... Don't make excuses! You love her, don't you? Y yes of course Then go see her! I can just take the train, right? God, I can. Yes, you can! Dummy! God, I feel so stupid. That's normal, you are pretty stupid! Anyway... Natsuki sat down in the desk next to me. Uh, did you see the new manga that the author of Parfait Girls came out with? It's really... I began to tune her out. Not to be rude, but just to appreciate things. I could just go visit Yuri. It was as easy as buying a train ticket. 
This is going to be a piece of cake. It was not a piece of cake. Uh, 10,950 yen is the cheapest option. My heart hurt, my, but my wallet hurt more. I winced, but quickly strengthened my resolve. For Yuri! Click. A window popped up. Are you sure? I slammed my head onto the desk. Yes, damn it, I'm sure. I clicked yes, and when the purchase went through, I screenshot the ticket. I then emailed the picture to myself, shut my laptop, and turned off my light. I slowly crawled into bed. The train leaves at 8 tomorrow. Hopefully I can get out of the house by 7. Give myself time to get there and get situated for a 12-hour train ride. I sighed. The things I do for love. I rubbed my eyes. God damn it, it is too early for this. I got through all of the security and all of the luggage garbage. After that, it was just standing around in the middle of the giant train station waiting for my ticket to be called. Thank God it's cold in the mornings. I muttered and put my hands in my pockets. A mostly outside train station is both a blessing and a curse. I could be getting sunburnt to hell for all I know. <sighs> but that's the thing, I'm, I don't know. I just wonder if I should go to the general store and get some sunscreen. Train 32 is now boarding. Train 32 from Nakatomi to Lakeview. I repeat. I checked my ticket. Yep, I was right. It was time to board. I shuffled towards the approaching train. Seeing the vast amount of people lining up only made me more nervous. Despite being on the bus plenty of times, I've never been on a train. I can only hope it's not too different. Uh, I mean, it looked different. But one thing I can say with confidence is that assigned seats on public transportation is the best thing since sliced bread. Not having to worry about it if I'll be standing for hours is something I'm not going to take for granted. But something I did take for granted was not having to ride a train for hours. Clearly, things have changed. I sighed. This is gonna suck. 11 hours and 59 minutes later. Yeah, that sucked. Watching the sun go down on a train was pretty cool, but getting there was probably the most boring experience of my life. My phone died quickly. I finished the books I brought. And my laptop wasn't even charged. I don't know why you didn't charge your laptop before you got on the train. I sat there and did nothing for four hours straight hours. I would have tried sleeping, but the train was moving around too much. I would have tried socializing, but everyone around me was some tired businessman or some tired mother. But all in all, ooh, I that. I'm just glad it's almost over, and that I get to see Yuri. That's probably the only thing that kept me going during the arduous journey. The thought of my grape angel. I instantly wrote that off my list of things to call Yuri. That just felt blech. I looked out the window to try and brainstorm more names, which is when I noticed that we had begun to slow down. Now arriving at Lakeview Station! Oh, thank God! I'm finally here! I put everything I had out back in my pot backpack and put said bag on my... on said back. Uh, I messed up the sentence the first time I tried to read it, too. When the train fully stopped, I stood up, only to almost immediately fall back down. My legs fell asleep. God damn it. I tried my best to balance as I stood up once again. When I finally got motor function back, I walked off the train. It was quite dark. I needed to find a bus stop, catch a ride to my hotel, and rest up for tomorrow. I want to be in tip-top shape when I see that mature beauty. Oh no, that makes her sound old. Ah, jeez. Why do hotel rooms never have blinds? Well, motel rooms. I'm running off my savings here. I can't afford a hotel. I shook my head. I gotta get up. I want to save for what little time I have. I muttered, forcing myself to sit up. I left my bed, showered in the crappy motel shower, changed clothes, ate a bag of chips for breakfast, and checked out. After checking out, I walked through the area to reach the bus stop I used last night. I will say it was nice to be away from suburbia. This place felt homely. Buildings were sprinkled here and there. Yeah, but it was no Tokyo and being able to hear the birds was nice. I continued this train of thought as I sat down on the bus stop bench. God, it really is just a beautiful day today. It's perfect for a date. I rubbed my hands together, deviously so, as the bus pulled up to the curb. I stepped off the bus a few minutes late, or later. Well, here we are. Lakeview, I think. 
I'm blanking on the name. But this was the hospital, which meant that I was only a few minutes away from seeing my girlfriend. How did you know to get off at the right place if you didn't know the name? It really was just that easy. I felt like a fool for not considering it before. Twelve hours was nothing. I deeply exhaled as I pushed the doors open. I walked over to the lady at the front desk. Hello. How may I help you? It's flowers. She seemed oddly familiar, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. I shook my head. I'm here to visit my girlfriend. Oh, how sweet. Let me check if she's open for visitors. My heart sunk. Oh, what's her name? I gave her Yuri's first and last name, but as I did, I felt myself disassociate. Open for visitors? What if she isn't open for visitors? Will I have to go all the way back? Will this entire trip have been for nothing? Looks like you're good to go. She's in room 204 of the West Wing. Would you like a map? Uh, yes please. She handed me a paper brochure and I was off. Thank God she's open for visitors. I don't know what I would have done if she wasn't. Probably cry, but whatever. No time to dwell. I have places to be. After a few minutes of walking, I found myself in the West Wing, and subsequently outside the room I was told to go to. I took a deep breath. This is what I've been waiting for. I steeled my nerves and I knocked. No reply. I knocked again. Yuri? Nothing. I jiggled the doorknob. It was unlocked, so most likely she's in there. I considered my options. And then I opened up the door. Hmm? She was asleep. But it was her. It was Yuri. I felt overwhelmed almost at the sight of her. I was relieved, happy, excited, everything. And I was just so violently in love. Being in this state of mind after only being away from the girl for a few weeks could not have been healthy. But I didn't care. Y my voice cracked. Y Yuri! <sighs> she jumped, startled awake by my yell. Oh, crap, sorry. Oh, Ali, it's just you. For a second there, I thought... She trailed off, and then practically tackled me. Oh my god. Right, speech imp. <laughs> she grabbed my, er, me tightly, and I felt my bones get crushed, along with my airflow being cut off. This feels... familiar. Good. She whispered into my chest. Before it began to get wet, she kissed my sweater, and then she put her head on my shoulder. It's been so hard without you here. She sniffled. I just missed you so badly. And you're... Ellie, you're 12 hours away. How did you... Hey, hey. I rubbed her head. I took a train. It was worth it to see you. Don't worry about it. She nodded. Okay. There was a pregnant pause. The silence of the room only filled by me rubbing Yuri's hair. I... She spoke up, her voice faulting. I thought I wasn't going to make it at times. I know, I know. But it's all right now. I'm here. You're here. We're back. I kissed the top of her head. Coconut. I chuckled internally. Of course she brought her soap with her. I... I know. She laughed, almost forcefully. God, look at me. I could feel her wipe at her eyes. C crying over a boy. Well, if it helps, I've cried over plenty of boys. I still don't know what he meant by that. She giggled. Genuinely. Yes, honey. That helps.